back in medieval times, these incredible mechanical clocks were used in order to track time and dates and events throughout the calendar year. In modern times, our computers take dates and store them and use them as numbers. Hi, I'm Pamela Schultz, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how dates are represented in your computer. And the motivation for this actually came from a question from a Datagraph user who knew how to increment dates in a spreadsheet, but they weren't sure how this was done in Datagraph. And Datagraph has so many advantages in terms of using time series data. It was actually hard for me to do this video because there's so many things I would like to talk about, but I'm going to focus on some basics and go back in time not so far back as medieval times, but talk to you about what Unix time is, how that relates to how dates look in Datagraph versus how they work in a spreadsheet, and teach you about some basic date operations that can make working with this data very easy in Datagraph. And at the end of the video, I'll actually show you what this medieval clock in Lund, Sweden does twice every day. Back in the early 1970s, we had the development of the computer operating system. This meant that computers could be used all over the world and have a standard that they would adhere to. And one of the big decisions was how do we take dates and times and represent them in our computer? And they knew they needed to use some kind of numerical format, but exactly what format would that be? Well, the two real big decisions that they had to make were if they're going to use numbers, when is going to be the start point? In other words, what is time zero? And the other thing is, what is the time increment of interest? Because this was the early 70s, they decided that the first day of 1970 would be time zero. And they also decided that the increment of interest would be a second. This means that the number 60 represents one minute into the year of 1970. The number 3600 is 1 a.m. of January 1st, 1970, and so on. If you wanted to represent a date or a time prior to uh, this date, then you would need to use negative numbers. And this system is what is known as Unix time. This is a system that has been used uh, widespread throughout computer systems. It's a universal system that computers can use to track and monitor time and do calculations with time. It's used in Mac OS. It's used in programming languages like Python, C++. And yes, Datagraph also uses the Unix time standard. Now let's move into the 1980s and the advent of the spreadsheet. Spreadsheets were a game changer for computers. They meant that anyone with a little bit of training could go ahead and start doing calculations with their computer. And developers of spreadsheets, for example, Lotus123, do you remember that one? Well, in that program, they decided they would not use the Unix standard. And instead, they thought their program was going to be used primarily by just accountants and uh, people in sales. So let's stick with a unit of time that's of interest to them, which is a day. They also decided instead of starting their time increments at in 1970, that they would start it at 1900. Seemed reasonable, though they did have one bit of a snafu right off the bat, that they programmed this up as though 1900 was a leap year, and actually it's not. This is a bug that continues to persist. Had it in Lotus 123, still have it in Excel today. You can type in February 29th, 1900, and it will accept it as a valid date. Regardless, there is some advantage to this. Again, if you're just adding some days to a list of dates, this is very easy to do in Excel. Also, if you're incrementing dates, just like you can increment numbers in a spreadsheet, you can increment dates in a spreadsheet, and essentially that's what's happening. It's incrementing the number that is represented behind that date. The first thing I want to show you in Datagraph is how we add increments of time to a list of dates in our Datagraph file. So let's go ahead and go into a file where I have a date column. You remember Datagraph has, uh, we don't just have cells with data types. Our entire column is set to a specific data type. And here I've already set one up with dates. And if I want to add time to this, say 30 days, for example, if I have a list of transactions, you want to know when 30 days from that transaction is, you would add an expression column. In that column, the first thing I do is use the name of my date column as a variable. And if you just do that and nothing else, you're going to see some very big numbers. That's because you also need to change the format from showing you the number, which currently is the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970, to showing you the date. 
then you can add 30 to this. But if you just add 30, then all you're doing is adding 30 seconds. It's not going to change your date. You can confirm this by changing the display format to quickly show you not just the date, but also the time. And then to get to adding 30 days, I can just add a conversion factor in so that I'm actually adding 30, or, or sorry, the number of seconds in 30 days, not just 30 seconds into my uh, date here. But what's really nice about this is that you're not just limited then to using days. It makes it easier if you want to say you do only need to add 100 seconds to a certain time or 100 minutes, or maybe there's some other increment of time you need to add. Uh, all of those can be done easily with this format. Now let me get to answering this very specific question about how do we create a list of dates in Datagraph, where is in a spreadsheet you can just use this fill functionality to drag down and increment dates. And that's convenient if you just want to do a few dates, but in Datagraph, our method actually is great no matter how many dates you want to produce. So let me show you how to do this. Uh, first of all, we're going to use the expression column again to create this list of dates. And let's just start first actually by incrementing uh, just an integer. And you do that using the built-in row counter. You'll see by default, this has the hashtag symbol. If you type this in, and just uh, hit enter, then it's going to ask you, well, how many numbers do you want? And I could type in, for example, 365. And then I will just see 365 numbers. So very easy to create a list of integers. If I want this to be dates, then again, you're going to change the format into a date format. Now, what is it showing you now? It just seems like all the same date. That's because, again, this is all seconds. You want to confirm this again just change the format so you can also see the date and the time but if i want this to be in incrementing in days i'm going to do the same thing as before i will add a conversion factor and i can actually do this using a variable so if i have a variable that has the number of seconds per day i can just multiply by that and then i get my incremented list of dates Now, in case you didn't notice, this list still starts at January 1st, 1970. So I'm going to add one more component into this, and that is a start date. And there's two methods that I'll show you for how to do this. The first is using the datagraph date format. This is a way that lets you specify dates. You can also use times for this, where you're allowed to enter into any numerical field, the year, followed by a colon, the month, another colon, and then the day, and that is a way that Datagraph knows that that's a date, but it can use that again in these expressions. I can also even make this a variable and have that be my start date. Now, I will also need to increment down my row number by one so that, in fact, that is exactly the day that I'm starting with. But this gives us a way, again, to use dates in numerical expressions and variables. The second way I want to show you actually uses a function called seconds and you can put into this function again years months days and time elements to give you back the number of seconds in 1970 or since 1970 or before depending on what day you're interested in but again this works the same exact way the advantage here is that then i could use one of the elements as a variable itself so here i'll show you that i could take the year for example make that a slider variable. And then if I wanted to change the year with this slider and have that be a dynamic component of this file or a graph that I'm using with this data, then that's something that I can easily do. There are so many different things that you can do with dates and data graph. There are column properties you can do. There are special date functions that you can use. I'll put a link in the description of the video to point you to some of those. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave you again in Lund, Sweden, where it's 3 p.m. and an interesting procession is about to begin. You'll see that this beautifully restored medieval clock has this procession of the three wise men. Also up on top, there's a couple of knights that are battling one another. This was something I got to see in Lund, Sweden a few years back, and I think it's a, it's a pretty interesting uh, bit of history, of time history. With that, if there's any other questions on anything, 
that I presented today. If you have any questions on how to do anything in Datagraph, uh, dates and time or otherwise, you can leave comments below or email us, help at visualdatatools.com. Thank you.